So some of the pressurized mister dose inhalers you buy might not come with a counter and so you would need to know how much of your medication is left after you've been using it for some time. So for this you just need a, a cup with some water in it and then that's what I want to demonstrate here. So the first one I'm going to put in is a canister that's almost full and then the next one is an empty canister. So you notice that which is full sinks straight to the bottom of the glass tumbler whereas the empty one floats above. So that's how you can tell how much of your medication is left prior to use. So using your pressurized meter dose inhaler, which is this, there are 10 steps that you want to achieve to be sure that you use it properly. And so we'll go through them and the first step is usually the easiest but normally a lot of people forget it and that's confirming the expiry date on the medication. So across the black label on the canister, you can see the expiry date over there, all right? So the next step, if you haven't used your inhaler in a while or you just bought a brand new inhaler, then you want to prime the inhaler and it's really easy. Two pops in the air away from your face, so this. And that's it, your inhaler is primed. Now, the second step that you want to go through is you want to shake your medication properly to mix the propellant with the inhaler, okay? And we've achieved that now. now Third step that you want to do is position yourself to use the medication. So you should either sit in up straight or standing, whichever you prefer, or you shouldn't be lying down, okay? All right, now, the fourth step is you want to get the medication ready to use. So you take a deep breath in and breathe out fully. So you place the inhaler upright in your mouth and that's how it should be. Not this way and definitely not this way. So you want it upright, facing towards the ceiling. And you want to form a tight seal with your lip and the inhaler and make sure your tongue is not obstructing the opening of the mouthpiece so that when you squeeze the drug, you breathe in through your mouth for three seconds, slowly and gradually. Then you take out the medication, hold your breath and count to 10 or as long as you can hold your breath before 10 seconds, okay? And then when you're done with this, you slowly breathe out through your nostrils and then you'd have completely used the inhaler. So completing this counts as one puff of your medication. If you're asked to use two puffs, then you have to wait 30 to 60 seconds and then repeat this entire process again. <laughs> Some people it might be a bit difficult to go through the breathing techniques that we described while using the pressurized meter dose inhaler and that's where this device comes in. So this is a space aero chamber that consists of just three main parts, the mouthpiece for where you're going to place your mouth in, a glass aero chamber for where the medication is going to be in and then this is the opening for the medication where you're going to connect your pressurized meter dose inhaler. So this aero chamber there are some steps that you need to confirm before you use it and you need to make sure there are no cracks on the glass area chamber so that the medication is not lost. You need to also confirm there's no foreign object so that you don't have to breathe in something else while you're trying to get the medication in. And then you need to confirm that this medication can form a tight seal with the opening here. So when you place it, there should be no gaps on the edge. So you see that this forms an almost perfect seal over here. Okay. Other things that you need to know while using the air chamber are when using it to breathe in, you need to confirm that this doesn't happen. You don't want to hear that noise. That means that you're breathing too fast to the aero chamber and you're not getting the maximum effect with it. So, to use the aero chamber, you prepare the pressurized meter dose inhaler as we earlier described. Check the expiry date. If it's a new one, two puffs in the air to prime it as usual and shake it before you use. Okay? So, the next thing that you want to do is you now connect the pressurized meter dose inhaler to the opening on the spacer device. And now it's fully connected. Next is to prepare yourself to use the medication. So sit up straight or stand, whichever you prefer. However, in this point, you don't have to do the deep breath in and out at this point because you're going to just be breathing in gradually with the medication. So form a tight seal with your mouth and the mouthpiece. So that's the tight seal on the side. You ensure your tongue is not obstructing the mouthpiece, and then you squeeze your pressurized meter dose inhaler. And then you just take gradual breaths, three to five normal breaths through your mouth as, as calmly as you can. And then you just take this breath slowly. So 
After 3 to 5 breaths, it's assumed the medication is completely inhaled, so you wait 30 to 60 seconds and repeat the entire process again, and then you squeeze for the second puff in, and then you just do the exact same thing, 3 to 5 normal breaths, and you would have used the spacer device completely. And with that, you've completed two puffs of your pressure meter dose inhaler with a spacer device. So in a couple of people, using the spacer aero chamber with the pressure meter dose inhaler might be difficult for them because they are unable to hold it upright and take the slow breaths in and out while using it. So that's where this comes in. So this is a mask that can be attached to the spacer aero chamber. So you just have the mouthpiece of the mask, the mouthpiece go directly into the mask. And this is especially helpful in people that are unable to hold this up especially the elderly that have tremors or children that might be a bit agitated. So how this works, we we'll form the tight seal now with the mask and the mouthpiece of this. Then you just take this elastic band and wrap it over the head to ensure that this mask completely covers the nose and the mouth. So that's how you're sure that the size is appropriate. So we just do this. So you need a seal that is tight enough, so you have to get the band to hold off. As you can see, the hands are not really needed, just to support the device to form a tight seal that covers both the nose and the mouth, so you don't want any air leaks. And for that reason, that's why you just use the hands to support slightly, and then that's all. So when you squeeze the inhaler, it's normal steps, you sit up straight, squeeze your inhaler. You just breathe in gradually through the nose, in and out, for three to five normal breaths, okay? And then after you do that, you can now take the mask out, wait 30 to 60 seconds, and then proceed to give the second puff and then repeat the same process. And that completes two puffs of the spacer aero chamber with the mask device. So the spacer device is out here to assist you, but then you also have to take care of it so that the spacer device is always ready and available once you want to use it. So the first things that you need to do is always regularly check the glass air chamber to be sure that there are no cracks and then also to check the valve on the inside to ensure that the valve is still intact. Now, other things that you want to do about the spacer device is you want to store it in somewhere that's not too hot and not too cold so that you don't have any damage to the rubber tubings that are within the spacer device. Also, you should wash your spacer device regularly and by wash, you just need to do this once a week and what you need to do is just take this device and soak it in lukewarm water with the light detergent for about 15 to 30 minutes, rinse thoroughly with water and allow to air dry. So when we say light detergent, we're just saying don't put bleach in it. Any light detergent is fine enough. And then lukewarm water just fresh out of the tap and that should work. So after you're done with the spacer device, leave it out in the air to dry. You shouldn't dry this with the cloth. The reason why is that should you clean this with a cloth, it could generate some static electricity that when you use the medication, it's now going to stick on the edges of here and none is going to come out to the mouth space and then it defeats the entire purpose of the spacer device. So allow to air dry and that way your spacer device is happy. So, Using the discus inhalers is awfully similar to the pressurized meter dose inhalers. There are just a few differences here and there which we're going to explain. So first of all, this is a discus inhaler, all right? Has expiry dates just on the reverse side, and you can see that. So to use the discus inhaler, the first thing is you want to open up the medication. So just on this little groove here, just roll the medication, and it clips open, clicks open. Now. The next thing you want to do is, you notice that there are a couple of differences. So now, this is the mouthpiece here. That's a lever for opening the mouthpiece. And then there's a counter just on the body of the medication that shows how much is left. So that counter goes down by one count each time this lever is pulled down to the bottom and it clicks its head. So, to open up the medication, pull down on the lever. And then you see that the mouthpiece is now open. The drug is primed and it's ready to use. So next is to prepare yourself to use the medication. So you want to sit up straight or stand, whichever you prefer. And the next thing is to take a deep breath in and breathe out fully to empty your lungs.
So you place the medication's mouthpiece in your mouth and ensure that you have a tight seal with your lips around it. Then you forcefully breathe in through your mouth in and then begin to hold your breath and count for 10 seconds or as long as you can hold your breath, whichever comes first. And then after that, you breathe out slowly through your nostrils and you're done. And with that, you've completed using the Discuss Inhaler. So once you're done using the Discuss Inhaler, lift the lever back up, it closes up the mouthpiece and then just roll it and you're done. Now, this counts as one puff of the Discuss Inhaler and if you have to do two puffs as usual, you wait 30 to 60 seconds and then repeat the process again. So using the double hailer is a lot similar to most of what we've described today so I'll just get through with it. So this is a turbo hailer. Okay? So first of all you just unscrew this cap and then separate it and then you have the medication. So it has the expiry date written on the body and then it also has a counter that shows you how much of the drug is left and then here is the mouthpiece for the medication. So what you do first is that you want to open up the medication and the mouthpiece for it to be ready. So you just twist this lower end of the cap till you hear it click and it's ready to use. Next thing you want to prepare yourself to use the medication. So the usual steps apply. You sit up straight or stand, whichever you prefer. Take a deep breath in and out fully. So you form a tight seal with your mouth and the mouthpiece of the medication and then you take a forceful breath through your mouth into your lungs and then hold your breath, begin to count to 10 or as long as you can hold your breath, remember whichever comes first, and then you breathe out slowly through your nostrils and you're done. After you've done that, twist the cap back to closed and then take the cover and close up the medication and you're done. That counts as one puff of the topo healer. So if you've been asked to use two puffs, then you're just meant to repeat the same steps after 30 to 60 seconds of using this. So on some occasions, it might be difficult to either find or afford a space aero chamber. And when this occurs, then there's normally an, a sort of an alternative to this. So that's where the bottled water comes in. So basically you want to use a small bottle of water, either 50 cl or lower, so that it's almost the same size as the air chamber, okay? So you don't want longer bottles because the medication is just going to waste inside the bottle, so something shorter. So what you do is, you first of all, you get the bottle, let the water out, allow it to dry, okay? Then, this opening here serves as the mouthpiece for the air chamber. Now, at the base of the bottle, you now use a hot knife and make a hole as shown. So you just hit the knife until it's red hot and then on the base of the bottle you would have marked out the size of the pressurized meter dose inhaler mouthpiece and then use the knife and make a cut that is equal, a square cut equal to the size of that. and then it comes out as this. So this now serves as where the inhaler is going to be inserted. So I grab the inhaler, usual preparation steps, shake, expiry date, prime if it's new, and then insert it just into this hole. So you see, the inhaler actually sits in quite nicely into the opening, right? So when you do that, same step, put the mouth over the opening of the bottle, Form a tight seal. And you're done. That's two puffs with the improvised spacer. So the only disadvantage is with this is that this doesn't have a valve, obviously, and the opening here, though you should make a pre-measurement so that you're sure that what you open is not wider than this. However, 
in the event that you have an opening wider than the opening of your Vaseline inhaler or your pressurized inhaler dose inhaler, what you should do is to get a little bit of masking tape and just pad the edges until you can form a tight enough seal. So I'll just show that shortly. And then, so you have the edges padded so that that way, when this goes in, the seal is even tighter. And then you have few amount of the medication leaking out. So if you don't have a masking tape, av tape available, you could also use plaster to achieve the same result. And this way, even though this is not a perfect spacer device, but in the event a spacer device is not available, this can be a lifesaver. So some of the inhalers that we actually use are going to contain some steroids in low doses or moderate doses. And each time you use an inhaler that has a steroid, you're going to have to add some extra steps. And these extra steps just entail you taking a sip of water, swiveling it in your mouth, and then you spit it out. So you just do this to rinse out your mouth. So you just get a glass of water. And that's it, you're actually done.